Hola, hi, this is Al, your statistics instructor. Let's get to work. In this video, we will find the expected value and variance of our residuals. That will be our main goal here. Okay? But before we get to do that, uh, let me. Uh, let me talk about a few useful results okay, that we're going to be using to uh, find uh, you know, the expected value of EI that's uh, the notation that we're going to be using to refer to our uh, ith residual and the variance of uh, EI okay? so, useful results Uh, let me call this guy result1 so let x and y be independent random variables ok then uh, the expected value of x times y will be the same as the expected value of x times the expected value of y and this is provided that the expectations exist ok proof uh, we are going to be giving uh, the uh, proof uh, for the uh, continuous case but you know, in the case of uh, in case you have discrete random variables, it's going to be uh, similar. Okay, but let's do it in the continuous case. Okay. So uh, let's uh, try and find the expected value of that product x times y. Okay. So since we are considering uh, that x and y are continuous random variables it's going to be given by an integral okay the integral let me just find it here we are so it's going to be the integral from negative uh, infinity to infinity Off, and then we need another integral there again and also from negative infinity to infinity of x times y times the joint probability function of x and y and first we are going to integrate with respect to x then we are going to be integrating with respect to y right? no problem there you guys have seen or done something like that before ok now remember that x and y are independent so if they are independent the joint probability density function uh, equals the product of uh, the marginals right? so let me copy paste this but now where we had the joint probability density function we could just write the product of the marginals right? and we get to do that uh, by independence ok, nice, we're making progress now we are integrating with respect to x first right? so uh, this guy here 
f at y, the marginal of y doesn't depend on x, so we could factor it out, right? y also can be factored out. So let me copy paste this and rearrange some of those terms. Let me factor out that guy here. Let me factor out the marginal of y as well. Okay? So now, uh, let me see. I just want this guy. Okay. Tell you what, let me get rid of this guy for a sec. I just want this guy here, the last integral. I want to uh, kind of uh, isolate it. So you can see clearly that this integral here inside these square brackets is just the expected value of x. You guys agree? Okay. So now what we have here happens to be the integral from negative infinity to infinity of y f of y, the marginal of uh, the random variable y, times now inside these square brackets what we have is the expected value of the random variable x. Right? But now note that this guy doesn't involve y, so we could factor it out. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing next. Okay. Let me factor it out. And now, as you can see, that integral here, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of y times f of y with respect to y is just the expected value of y. Okay? So what we have shown is that the expected value of x times y equals the expected value of x times the expected value of y, provided that x and y are independent. That's our first result. Okay. Now the next result that I want you to uh, remember uh, has to do with the covariance between two random variables x and y. So first, let me remind you what's the definition of uh, the covariance between two random variables x and y. Just by definition, it's the expected value of a cross product, right? It will be the expected value of x, oh, x minus mu sub x, right? Times y minus mu sub y. And, uh, well, we know that uh, mu sub x and mu sub y are just uh, representing the uh, expected value of x and the expected value of y, respectively. So it's just uh, notation, right? Okay. Okay, 
So now uh, let me remind you just for uh, just as uh, we have an alternative formula to find the variance right for a random variable uh, we have an alternative uh, formula to compute the covariance between two random variables okay so let me uh, let me call that guy the alternative uh, formula to compute uh, the covariance uh, so let me uh, refer to that guy as the uh, result number two. So the covariance between x and y uh, could also be computed as follows. The expected value of x times y minus expected value of x times expected value of y. Okay. Now I would like to show that result with you. Okay. So first, by definition, by definition we know the covariance between x and y equals the expected value of that cross product. Okay? So just let me copy paste this. Okay. Now, how about we expand this? Okay? Let's expand that cross product okay so that's the same as the expected value of x times y and of x times minus mu of y so let me just write it down like this uh, mu sub y times x, right? Then it would be minus mu sub x times y. So it would be this guy here, right? And finally, minus times minus, we have a plus, and we have mu sub x times mu sub y. Okay, no problem. Now, uh, we have the expected value of a sum, that's the same as the sum of expected values, so it would be the expected value of that first term, minus mu uh, sub y, it's just, it's going to be a constant, so we're going to uh, factor it out and then times the expected value of what of x right that's the second term then just like we did before we could factor out mu sub x and then we have the expected value of y and the last term is uh, the expected value of that product mu sub x times mu sub y that's going to be just a constant so we have the expected value of a constant the constant itself okay but now let me remind you that what we have here uh, mu sub y is just a notation for the expected value of y and mu sub x is just a notation for the expected value of x right so let me just uh, make it explicit so we can simplify this so expect the value of x same as mu sub x expect the value of y same as mu sub y This, you know, mu sub uh, y times mu sub x is the same as mu sub x times mu sub y, right? And note that these two guys here, the last two terms, will cancel out. So in the end, what we have is just this.
So that's our alternative uh, formula to compute the covariance between x and y. The covariance between x and y is just the expected value of x times y minus the expected value of x times expected value of y. Okay? Okay, so that's our result number two. Now let's talk about another result, result three, that I think will be very useful uh, to find the expected value and the variance of our residuals. Okay, so if x and y are independent, random variables, then the covariance between x and y is zero. Okay, here goes our proof. So, first, from uh, result number two, the one we just showed, we have that the covariance between x and y is the expected value of x minus the expect. Uh, sorry, the covariance between x and y equals the expected value of x times y minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. You guys agree? So let me just say that we have this from result number two. Okay? And let me switch notations here. Um, this is the same as the expected value of x. This is the same as the expected value of y. Okay. Just from our second result. But now, Note that in this case we're given this x and y are independent by assumption. Now, if x and y are independent by assumption, result number one says that guess what? The expected value of x times y equals the expected value of x times the expected value of y. So if x and y are independent, the expected value of a product is the product of expected values. Okay? So this guy here, the first term here, will be the same as expected value of x times expected value of y. This one, you know, remains the same, okay? But we get to do this by result 1. But now, you know, that is clearly 0. So we are done. If x and y are independent, then the covariance is zero. Okay? Finally, uh, this theorem we're not going to show. Okay? Um, uh, it is very likely that you have seen it before, either in Statistics 256 or for sure in Statistics 260. But anyway, you can find it in one of our textbooks, in Walkerley's textbook. Okay? So this is uh, the theorem 5.12. Let me state the theorem, and it has three parts, but we are only interested in the last one, part C. You'll see, okay? So anyway, we have uh, two samples of uh, random variables, okay? We have y1, Uh, we have uh, y2 
and uh, we have y sub n or y n and uh, we are going to have uh, another sample x1 x2 up to xn so these sample sizes of these two uh, random samples are not necessarily the same these random variables and the expected value let me use uh, mu i for the expected value of the ith uh, random variable y okay mu sub y we have the expected value of the uh, jth x random variable uh, let's call it eta right eta i why not now we are going to define a couple of um, a couple of linear combinations one of them we're going to be calling u1 and it's going to be just uh, a sub 1 times y1 plus uh, a sub 2 times y2 uh, plus uh, a sub n times y sub n okay or a n times y n okay let's now define another one let's call that one u2 and that one, as you can imagine, will be given in terms of uh, x's, right? We are going to have oh, x sub 1 here we will have a b instead of uh, an a we're going to have an x2 and then we will have a bm as you can imagine times xm okay another linear combination okay and those a's and b's are constants okay make sense so the result as i said the uh, theorem has three parts but uh, the only one that we're going to be using here is the third one that the covariance between u1 that linear combination that first linear combination and the second linear combination u2 is given by the sum of the covariances okay so it's actually going to be a double sum right because if you think about it it's like a table right you need all the cross products 
right? So this is what we have. So a i a i b j and the covariance between those cross products. Okay, makes sense. The yi's and the xj's. Okay, so we're done with the uh, results that we're going to need the preliminary results that we're going to need to show what we want to show, which is the uh, we want to derive a formula for the expected uh, value of the ith residual and the variance of the ith residual. So let's go back to our main problem. So first, uh, before we find the expected value, that's what we're going to be doing first, let me uh, show you what's the model, what's the uh, linear regression model that we are going to be considering here. So this is the one that we're going to be considering. You have seen it before, it's what we call the centered model. So beta 0 plus beta 1 1 times xi minus x bar plus epsilon i. The assumptions for the error will be the usual ones that the error has a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance uh, sigma square. Okay, so epsilon i normally distributed with mean 0 variance sigma square. Something really important is that the epsilons are independent. Okay? Okay. So, as I said, so we would like to find the expected value of the uh, residual, right? So, recall, recall that, and we're going to be defining the residual like this. We're going to be using uh, EI to refer to the ith residual. So residual for the ith observation will be just uh, notation EI and it's the difference between the observed value and the predicted value. Right? Okay. So, uh, we would like to find the expected value of EI. So we're going to need the expected value of YI and the expected value of YI hat. So we might as well find those guys now and then just uh, use uh, what we found. Okay. So the expected value of YI would be the same as the expected value of the expression that defines our model. You agree? So it's just this. It's expected value of a sum. We know that the expected value of a sum is the sum of expected values. This is a constant. It's a parameter, beta 0, unknown, but it's a constant, right? Beta 1, constant, xi, constant, x bar constant. The only one that is a random variable is this guy, right? And the expected value of a sum is the sum of expected values, right? 
and expect the value of a constant the constant and then we have the expected value of epsilon i but that's by assumption zero so we have that the expected value of yi is just this guy here beta zero plus beta one times x i minus x bar now let's do something similar with yi let's find the expected value of yi okay let me borrow this instead of this the one that we want is this the prediction yi hat then the, uh, the uh, prediction yi hat is given by beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat times xi minus x bar okay are we good great now remember that we have already shown that the expected value of beta hat because that's going to be the first term that uh, we will have here is beta zero right okay so at some point we're going to be using that this is going to be the expected value of beta hat one times a constant so we could factor out that constant and then we're going to need the expected value of beta one hat but remember that we have already shown that the expected value of uh, beta one hat is just beta one okay so that's what we're going to be uh, writing down on the next on the next uh, line okay so as I said expect the value of uh, beta hat zero beta zero this is just going to be expected value of beta hat one that's going to be beta one hat well beta one times x i minus x bar right it's the same okay so now let's find the expected value of the ith residual meaning of e i right this guy that's what we want let's find the expected value of ei which is the expected value of the difference between observation minus prediction right the uh, expected value of a sum is the sum of expected values so this is the same as the expected value of yi minus the expected value of yi hat but given what we have already done this is just expected value of yi beta 0 plus beta 1 times xi minus x bar that's the first part minus this right beta 0 plus beta 1 times x i minus x bar clearly that is 0 right so the expected value of the ith residual right meaning the difference between the ith observation and the ith prediction will be 0 great okay so next step we would like to find the variance of EI the ith residual but before we do that let me remind you something okay so uh, recall that uh, y hat uh, y 
hat and in this case I'm talking about y hat as in the uh, vector the n by 1 vector right we have n observations so that vector contains y1 y2 y3 up to yn as its elements okay now if you want to find that vector of predictions what you have to do is or what you could do is this multiply the uh, vector of observations which happens to be an n by one vector right so you pre-multiply that uh, uh, vector of observations by the hat matrix H which is an n by n matrix n by n matrix okay and remember I think that uh, we mentioned we mentioned this when we talked about uh, influential observations and we talked a little bit more about uh, the hat matrix and actually I think that we pointed out that's where the uh, H matrix gets its name from because you get you know y hat by doing this h times y okay okay so now uh, also when we talked about uh, leverages right what we said is that uh, hey so for instance if you want the first uh, prediction right you could get it like this multiply the first row of the matrix H times the vector Y okay so let me write that down like this uh, if you want just Y uh, hat 1 meaning the prediction for the first observation what you could do and let me write that down like this would be first yeah first row of H uh, times and let me use the uh, R notation right So the matrix multiplication between the first row of H times uh, the entire vector Y. Okay? Make sense? So let me try and be more specific about what I mean. So if H is uh, an N by N matrix, we could think about the first row like this H uh, 1 1 meaning the element uh, located at the uh, first row first column then H 1 2 first row second column and uh, so on right want to get rid of uh, that comma there okay now it's better and then uh, we would have uh, h13 and h1n right that would be the uh, first uh, row of our matrix H right and we could think about the uh, vector uh, Y something like uh, this let me write that guy like this Y1 uh, Y2 
to second observation dot 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 uh, y sub n make sense so when you do that when you do that uh, multiplication you end up with h11 times y1 oh let me just write that down plus h12 times y2 plus h13 times y3 dot 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 plus h1n times yn right and that would be an alternative way of finding the first observation right the first row of h times the entire vector of observations y right so that guy is a linear combination of all our observations okay now we are going to uh, make a few comments observations that uh, will be useful to find the variance of EI the ith residual so we're going to make these observations for uh, the first residual but you'll see at the end we're going to point out that what we did is applicable to any of the uh, N residuals okay here we go observation number one observation observation one uh, first the difference between uh, y1 and y1 hat well that would be just y1 let me copy paste that again just y1 minus this so we would have a minus here we would have a minus here minus and minus you agree no problem and we could re-express that as follows let's factor out that y1 okay so if we do that this is the same as 1 minus h11 times y1 right and then minus the rest of the terms okay makes sense that's our first observation nothing fancy second observation that will be useful uh, we want the variance of uh, that guy that would be the variance of uh, E1 right let me write that down like this E1 oh E1 
which is the same as the variance of that difference y1 minus y1 hat right but uh, notice that uh, the expected value of that difference is zero so the variance will be the same as the expected value of y1 minus y1 hat square right and let me just say that okay um, expected value of uh, this Is zero right we show that the expected value for the ith residual in particular for the first uh, you know it's going to be zero so then the variance is just the expected value of that quantity squared make sense okay no problem Right? But we could rewrite that product like this. I mean, that square like this. Right? The expected value of y1 minus y1 hat square is the same as y1 minus y1 hat times y1 minus y hat 1, right? But then, again, since uh, the expected value of this guy is 0, that is just the covariance between these two guys, right? You agree? expected value of this minus zero that would be its expected value times this minus its expected value zero so that's just the covariance right okay so that's our second observation okay another observation observation number three Observation 3. So uh, remember that we showed uh, in another video, right, when we talked about important properties uh, of H and I minus H, we showed that I minus H, where I represents an identity matrix of uh, dimensions M by N, right? So we showed that I minus H is idempotent, meaning that I minus H times I minus H equals I minus H, right? So let me remind you, recall that I minus H times I minus H equals I minus H okay meaning I minus H is item potent right okay now the first row of I minus H remember that I is an identity matrix right so uh, let me show you what the first row of I minus H looks like first row of I minus H. That guy will look something like this. 1 minus H11, one one, right? The element located at the first row, first column, right? But then, uh, 
since uh, you have just a diagonal matrix, right? Outside the diagonal, you have a bunch of zeros. So if you have i minus h, the second element, right, of the first row will look something like this. Whatever you have on the first row, second column, multiplied by a negative sign. And the th same thing will be true for the other uh, elements, right? Right? Make sense? Can you see it? The last one will look like this. Right? That's what the first row looks like. Now, so here we have used the item potency of i minus h. Okay? Now, uh, let me tell you what the first column of i minus h looks like. We showed, remember, that i minus h is uh, symmetric, meaning i minus h transpose equals i minus h, right? So let me remind you about that. Recall Recall also that um, I minus H oh, uh, I minus H transpose equals I minus H. So I minus H again is symmetric. So what that means is that the first uh, column of I minus H, I'm sorry, the first row of I minus H equals the first column of I minus H transpose. You agree? Right? So, uh, the um, first column is exactly as the first row. Okay? That's what that means, right? I minus H equals I minus H transpose. So its first row is the same as its first column. So first column of this, right? first column looks like this. Let me write that down like this. Dot, dot, dot. sense and that's by the symmetry right okay so note that um, and here's where the item potency is going to be useful okay if you do i minus h times i minus h, right, the product will be i minus h. You guys agree? Okay. Let's do the. Uh, let's find the first entry of the matrix uh, i minus h. Okay. So to find the first entry, the one located at the first row, first column of i minus h, that product, 
you do the first row times the first column right so first row times first column right let me write it down like this first row and let me use that uh, R notation uh, meaning that I'm multiplying these uh, vectors right first row times first column equals what I minus H squared plus uh, H12 square plus H13 square plus H1n squared right so let me write that down it's going to be that first term squared plus that second term also squared plus that third term and so on squared dot 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 okay but now that's just from doing the multiplication if you want the uh, first element in the uh, product matrix you do first column times first row right but again by the idempotency we know that it's going to be the ith uh, well the uh, first in this case the uh, first element in the diagonal uh, in the diagonal of i minus h right and that guy will be let me just say that by I the potency of I minus H that happens to be just 1 minus H 1 1 make sense this is just from the definition of uh, how you multiply matrices if you want the first element of the uh, the first element that uh, lives in the uh, product of uh, these two matrices you do first row first column right but then we also know by item potency what the result is going to be so the result of multiplying the first row and the first column is going to be the uh, first element in the diagonal of I minus H so that's why we know this and this is just from applying the definition of multiplication between those two matrices right okay so keep that observation uh, in mind uh, finally observation number four uh, observation four uh, by theorem uh, 5.12 part C right remember the one that we mentioned here That the covariance between two uh, linear combinations u1 and u2 is just the sum of all possible 
covariances right okay so here we go note something interesting here right our linear function the one that we are interested in to find the uh, variance of uh, the uh, first residual E1 if you want E1 E1 is this guy that's the first residual and it's a linear combination let me write it down here it might be better if I write it down here The first residual is a linear combination of your observations, right? And each of those coefficients is defined by, in this case, since we're interested in the first residual, is uh, the multiplication between the first row of the matrix I minus H and the uh, vector of uh, observations, Y, okay? So this guy would be using the uh, using the uh, notation from the theorem. This would be your u1, your linear combination. Okay, makes sense because they refer to uh, that linear combination, right? Okay. Now note, uh, we want the variance of uh, E1, right? That's what we want. But what we said is, ah, interesting, the variance of E1 is the covariance, right, of E1 with E1, or using that notation from that theorem, would be the covariance between u1 and u1. Make sense? Okay? So just two ways of writing down or thinking about it. But anyway, so here, let me go back to that theorem that we're going to be using. Here, u1 and u2 are the same linear combinations. Okay? We want the covariance between u1 and u1 and it's going to be the uh, cross products right between those coefficients times the covariances now something interesting here is that uh, note that the y's y1 is independent of y2 because e1 is in the well epsilon 1 is independent of epsilon 2 okay the epsilons the uh, actual errors are independent by assumption, right? The epsilon i's are independent. So that means that the y's, y1 is independent of y2, y1 is independent of y3, and so on. So when we apply that theorem, right? Uh, we only have these covariances when i is equal to j right so just covariance of y1 and y1 covariance of y2 and y2 covariance of y3 and y3 and so on and the cross products here right so let's write that down right so we would have just the covariance Variance between U one and U one, right? Or if you want to make it more in terms of uh, what we have, right? Let's write E one. But you can see that uh, it's the linear combination that they refer to that theorem right 
the covariance between E1 and E1 it's the same as the variance of E1 right so anyway what we said is you will have just uh, these cross products when uh, the i and j's are the same so when you do that you have the squares and it would be covariance between y1 and y1 and then it would be the square of this because you know the a's and b's are the same so when you do those cross products you end up with uh, squares oh never mind let me do it like this covariance between y2 and y2 and so on you see where I'm going right and we don't have covariances uh, we don't have the uh, covariances of uh, the other guys of the uh, cross products because the yi's are independent right and they inherit that property from the epsilons Variance between Yn and Yn. So the covariance between Y1 and Y1 is the variance of Y1, variance of Y2, variance of y n right so what we're going to have is just yeah, let me rewrite it variance of the yi's is just uh, sigma squared remember so it's the same for all of them so we can factor that out so what we end up with here is this variance of y1 sigma squared variance of y2 sigma square so on right so times sigma squared right now finally remember that we said observation number three it turns out that if you found the uh, product between these two matrices right it would be by definition first row first column to find the first element here uh, if you wanted a second one it would be uh, if if you wanted to find other elements like the one uh, on the uh, the second element on the diagonal it would be the second row second column and so on anyway so in this case what we realized by observation number three is that this the first row times the first column 
is the same as 1 minus h11 where h11 is the uh, element on the uh, the first uh, row first column so meaning uh, the one the first element on the diagonal right of uh, the uh, matrix H so that guy would be just uh, this is just 1 minus H11 by the item potency right so variance of E1 equals this 1 minus H11 times sigma squared and that's by observation 3 Now, note that we did this only for the uh, first uh, residual, but the same ideas hold true if you wanted the uh, ith residual, right? If you wanted the ith residual, yeah, the expected value of ei is zero, right? For any of the n residuals right let's see in this case is when we said let's concentrate on the uh, first residual and then we'll see how we can generalize that so if you wanted the ith prediction what you need is to multiply by the ith row of the matrix H right here you would have the same but in terms of the ith row ith prediction y i hat would be h i 1 times y 1 plus h i 2 times y 2 so on up to h i n times y n right the difference between y i and y i hat would be just the ith residual 1 minus h i i y1 minus h i2 y2 so on so the ith residual again it's a linear combination right of the y's that observation the variance of the ith residual y i minus y i hat this holds through uh, this holds true for the others for the ith uh, observation right this is true we showed that in general that uh, i minus h is idempotent so the product of uh, multiplying i minus h and i minus h is going to give you i minus h so if you take the ith row of that guy times the ith column you will end up with 1 minus h i 1 minus h i 2 so on can you see so i item potency right this is just the multiplication of the ith row ith column and that will give you the ith <coughs> diagonal element of i minus h right so our uh, arguments hold for the ith residual, okay? So, in general, variance of the ith residual one minus h i i meaning the ith element of the diagonal and sometimes you're going to see that notation 
Uh, we talked about it when we talked about leverage, that some authors refer to the ith diagonal element of the H matrix as just um, H sub I, right? Okay, so let's summarize. What we have seen here, what we uh, have shown here, as is that the expected value of the ith residual is zero. And we have derived a formula for the variance of the ith residual as well. And it's given by 1 minus hi times sigma squared. Okay? Well, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care and keep working hard. See you next time. Bye!